some farm equipment manufacturers reel in soybeans, maize, and sunflowers, but not John Deere. For that and similar jobs, we have our exclusive 50A series row crop head, a highly productive yet versatile machine that gets the job done better and more quickly. And a good job done here begins here, in your shop. Correct pre-delivery and field preparation is essential to getting that high productivity. Let's go over the major points. All the details and particular instructions are in your pre-delivery instructions and operator's manual. This program will present the highlights, along with showing you the important visible features. Before you begin, review the safety procedures in the operator's manual. Then follow them as you work. Be especially sure to heed this symbol whenever and wherever you see it, on the machine and in the written instructions. You'll see it in this program as well. Begin pre-delivery by cutting and discarding all the wires which secure the points. Remove the points and set them aside for later assembly. Pull the cotter pins from the center shields next to the shipping channels. Two from each shield. Set the shields and their pins aside for later assembly. Removing the shields will prevent possible damage during the following steps. You're now ready to remove the header from a shipping skid. First, route a chain or sling through the shipping channels. Be very sure that the chain is strong enough to lift the entire head safely. A sling is available through service guard tools. Attach the chain or sling to a hoist. Again, a hoist that is a match for the job. Raise the head just far enough to clear the skid. Remove the shipping skid clamps and uprights from the head. Next, slide the two 4x4s under the top beam until they are centered. You're now ready to roll the head into its operating position by lowering it down and forward to the ground. Then remove the chain or sling and the shipping channel. You are now ready to attach the head to the feeder house. First, make sure that the feeder house lock pins are in. You do this by pivoting and sliding the stop bolt. These must be in or the feeder house may be damaged as it is attached. The quick couplers also must be in. The models 453 and 454 four row heads have just one quick coupler located on the right side. It too must be in. If the head is to be used on an 8820 combine, the coupler that comes with the combine must be attached to the left hand header shaft. This replaces the coupler sprocket on that side. When all is ready, drive the combine up to the header, center the feeder house in the header opening, and lower it just enough so that the feeder house pillow blocks are beneath the header top beam. Raise the header all the way up. Then shut off the engine and lower the lift cylinder safety stop. It is very important that the stop be lowered every time the header is raised. This must be done. Loosen the lock plate and pivot it to center the lock pin. Slide the lock pin into the header and re-tighten the lock plate. Do this on both sides. Match the coupler sprockets and install the coupler sprocket chain. Then slide the coupler over the chain until it locks into place. The header is now attached. The next step is to reinstall the center gatherer shields. Attach them to the header frame using the cotter pins which were removed earlier. Adjust the shield hold down clips so that the shields are held securely. The shield should not bind as the row unit moves up and down. Adjust them to leave a quarter inch gap between the shields. The center gatherer points are next. Attach these using a spacer, flat washer, a lock washer and a nut in that order over a round head bolt. 
Now the outer gatherer points. Begin by inserting the hinge pin through its hole. Then the same size spacer, flat washer, lock washer and nut as was used on the center points. The point position can be changed as needed to meet varying crop conditions. A simple field adjustment. At first it should be set to point straight in the direction of travel. Once installed, the height of the points must be set. Use the spring locking pin to attach the height adjusting chain to its support bracket on all points. Adjust the height so that the points are just off the floor when the skid shoe just touches the floor. This adjustment is done with the draw bolt on the adjusting chain. The skid shoe should be in the center position. Most times it will operate in this position, although it can be easily changed in the field to change the height of cut. The height sensing system should be set next. At first, set each row unit for float. However, the units must be set back to rigid after the header height system is adjusted if sunflowers, maize, or milo is to be harvested. Each row unit float spring should be adjusted so that it is as light as possible, yet will still fall all the way down to stop. Now disconnect the tension spring and remove the lock pin from the shaft and switch arm. Six row and larger heads have a tension spring on both ends. Be sure that the sensing shaft under the header is free to rotate. Adjust the brackets if necessary to accomplish this. Then reinstall the tension spring or springs and lock pin. Raise each row unit as high as possible. Support it on a stand. Then adjust the actuating rod until it is tight on the drilled pin. Then loosen the rod until it moves back and forth freely on the drilled pin. Finally, remove and store in the toolbox the two locking pins on the sensor shaft and switchbox arm. The header is now ready for its pre-delivery check. Run the header at slow idle for 10 minutes. Stop the engine, then check the header for loose chains, hot bearings and binding parts. Then run it at fast idle for 5 minutes and do the same. If all checks out, the header is ready for delivery. We'll stop the program at this point before going to field preparation. Press the restart button when you're ready to continue. Several field adjustments can be made depending on the crop and harvesting conditions. In this program, we'll cover just four major ones, beginning with the tension of the rotary knives. To adjust, first loosen the two chain tightener nuts and loosen the chain with a tightener bolt. Then remove the chain by breaking it at a connector link. Next, remove the cotter pin and loosen the slotted nut until the knife can be moved by hand. Adjustment is correct if the rotary knife drags just slightly against its stationary knife. When correct, replace the cotter pin and remount the chain. A properly adjusted knife will be warm, but never hot after operation. The second adjustment is knife chain tension. Here, you loosen the two nuts, then tighten the adjusting bolt until a 20 pound force applied midway on the left hand side deflects the chain between three and nine thirty seconds of an inch. 3 sixteenths of an inch being just about perfect. When done, torque the nuts to 85 foot-pounds or 115 newton meters. Gatherer belt tension must also be adjusted. On the right hand belt, first loosen the jam nut. Then tighten the adjusting bolt until a force of 20 pounds or 88 newtons applied midway between the drive and lower sprockets moves the belt between a half inch and an inch. When correct, tighten the jam nut against the casting. 
the procedure is nearly the same on the left hand belt. Loosen the jam nut, tighten the adjusting bolt until you get that half inch to one inch deflection, then tighten the jam nut against the idler strap. The fourth adjustment we'll cover in this program is auger position. Up and down, front and rear. Down and back is the best position for most crop conditions. If an adjustment is to be made, begin with height. First, loosen the nut at the auger drive chain adjustment. Slide the tightener all the way up and retighten the nut. Do this whether raising or lowering the auger. The next step also to be done, whether raising or lowering the auger, is to loosen the four bolts in the auger height adjustment assembly. Then, to raise the auger, you loosen the nut atop the frame bracket while you tighten the nut beneath it. To lower the auger, you tighten this topmost nut, loosening the lower nut as you go, then tightening it when you reach the desired height. As a final action, be sure that all nuts on both the chain adjustment and the height adjustment are retightened. To set the auger either forward or to the rear, you once more begin by loosening the tightener nut, then slide the tightener up. Then loosen the four bracket nuts only. That done, you can position the auger for proper stripper clearance. Retighten these nuts and check the drive chain for proper tension. Conclude by retightening the drive chain tightener. Whatever the adjustment, up, down, forward or back, remember that the identical adjustment must be made on both sides of the auger. Fine tuning and specific individual adjustments can of course be made depending on crop or harvest conditions. For details, consult your operator's manual. Just be sure to follow all instructions exactly for that maximum productivity with minimum downtime we all desire.